Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Geography with me Stephen Doyle. Each week I'll be uploading a 5 minute video explaining as simply as possible the world around us. Today in 5 Minute Geography we're going to be looking at the devastating effects of an earthquake. Stick around to see how the ground can shake so hard it turns to quicksand. A big thank you to Callum Byrne for suggesting this topic. And don't forget to stick around to the end of the video for another 5 minute geography fact of the week. Earthquakes can cause damage to buildings and other infrastructure. The vibrations in the crust cause buildings and bridges to sway and crumble. This falling debris is very dangerous and causes many deaths. In the aftermath of an earthquake, rescue workers must search through the rubble and debris in search of survivors trapped underneath. The Haitian earthquake of 2010 caused widespread damage to infrastructure in the capital of Port-au-Prince. The buildings in Port-au-Prince were poorly built, meaning that the 7.0 magnitude earthquake caused them to totally collapse. The only airport in the country was unusable as the control tower was badly damaged. In total, 160,000 people died after the earthquake with a further 300,000 people estimated to have been injured, mostly from falling debris. In total, some 19 million cubic tons of rubble had to be removed from Port-au-Prince. The 2010 earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand caused extensive damage to the city centre. For example, it toppled two of the bell towers on the Christchurch Catholic Cathedral. The second effect of earthquakes are tsunamis. When earthquakes occur beneath the sea, they can produce huge waves known as tsunamis. As one plate subducts, the overlying plate can be forced upwards in a sudden movement. The uplifting of the plate causes an excess hump of water on the surface of the ocean. If, for example, the plate is uplifting by 4 meters, a 4 meter hump of water is created on the ocean's surface. This excess water spreads outwards in all directions, traveling across the oceans of speeds of up to 800 kilometers an hour. Most tsunamis are created by uplifts of less than one meter. However, more powerful earthquakes such as those occurred in Indonesia in 2004, or as we've seen Japan in 2011, create much larger waves. For boats out in the open sea, a tsunami is barely noticeable. However, as the wave approaches the coastline, the bottom of the wave comes in contact with the shore, slowing it down. This causes the rest of the wave to stand upwards, often quadrupling in size before hitting the coastland at speed. On December 2004, the devastating Indonesian tsunami was triggered by a 9.0 magnitude earthquake underneath the Indian Ocean. A large amount of water was displaced due to the uplifting of the Burma Plate. This wave travelled across the Indian Ocean before hitting coastlines of 14 different countries at heights of between 24 and 30 metres. An estimated 220,000 people were killed, most of whom were drowned. Since the devastating tsunami, an advanced tsunami warning system has been set up in the Indian Ocean. Finally, the third effect of an earthquake is a phenomenon known as liquefaction. During an earthquake, the intense shaking of the crust can cause soil to become saturated with groundwater. When this occurs, soil takes on the properties of a liquid and it kind of acts like a quicksand. This process is referred to as liquefaction. Due to liquefaction, the soil is unable to support buildings on top of it, causing them to collapse. Liquefaction caused widespread damage in Churchtown in New Zealand during an earthquake in 2010. Liquefaction occurred after the 1995 earthquake in Kobe, Japan, which caused entire apartment blocks to collapse as their foundations sank. Gas and sewage pipes also sank into the ground, causing them to bend and break. This led to the outbreak of fires across the city and played a part in 5,000 deaths. Liquefaction is such a strange phenomenon and it caused a car to sink into the ground in Christchurch in New Zealand in 2010. When the shaking stops, the ground stops vibrating and turns solid again, trapping anything 
that has been submerged within. Moonquakes, which are earthquakes on the moon, also occur, but they happen less frequently and have smaller magnitudes than earthquakes on the earth. As always, I've been Stephen Doyle with 5 Minute Geography. Please hit the like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you'd like me to cover a specific topic, please just pop it in the comment section below.